Hi everyone, Steve Crosby here. Good morning and welcome to this issue of Monday Morning Musings. We are continuing on with the Lord's Prayer. We're going to talk about the opener for a few minutes. Our Father. There's a lot of romantic notions about the, the use of Abba or Abba for Father. There are only 15 references in the Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament that describe or use that word to describe God. He's, he's, he's described as the creator. He's described as the father and the sense of his action. But in the sense of a direct address, addressing him as Abba doesn't exist. This is important. In Palestinian Judaism, at the time of Jesus, there is no reference in any of the literature that from that time of calling God Abba, personally, privately, devotionally, and especially in prayer. Zero. I want to say that again, because there's a lot of mythology out there. Zero references at the time of Jesus in Judaistic prayer literature to a directly address God as Abba. It would have been unthinkably disrespectful to address Yahweh, the unspeakable name, that way, with that kind of direct intimacy. Only the king is described as having a personal relationship with God in that way in 2 Samuel and in Psalm 89. Prophets, priests, and kings had direct access to God. The rest of us didn't. We need to understand that because this opener and with the uh, plural adjective pronoun in the beginning, our father would have blown the tops of their heads off. And they would have understood the profundity of what was being said in that brief opener. We're so familiar with it. And our spirituality is so casual and so familiar. And we take for granted the privilege of praying to our father that we lose the significance of what was really going on when Jesus actually sh shared that with the, with the guys. It would have it it, it 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 would have announced something to them. Now, there the, there are those times where father is used descriptively in a collective sense, like he's the father of Israel. That's true. It's you. Father is used that way. Notice, collectively, always speaking of the people as a group, not personally and privately. God is the father of Israel. And since they're part of Israel, they're, they're part of the people of God, they have an indirect connection to God as father in the sense of his function of loving care and mercies and authority but in the sense of direct, uh, what's called vocative, V-O-C-A-T-I-V-E, -E, to vocalize directly, to call him, to speak to him as Abba, did not exist. Why is that so important, folks? For us, it should be a, uh, uh, a marker, a milestone of the difference that Jesus has wrought for us, that we have the great privilege of entering into the kind of life and relationship that he had with Father. So when Jesus opens up this prayer with, pray this way, he is saying, come on in to the quality of existence that I have with 
my father and your father. Later on in the post-resurrection part of the narrative, which he says to Mary, Mary Magdalene or Mary in the garden, quit clinging to me, but go and tell them that I ascend to my father and their father. There is a, is a, a cosmic change in the universe. And we have such a great, great privilege to pray, Abba, Father. See you next time.